How is everyone today? Welcome back to the homestead. Today we're going to be working on our garden fence. We're going to be putting up some bracing on the corner posts. And you know, it might be overkill. This garden isn't huge. It's not around, obviously, acres and acres of land. But, you know, I want to have it really strong and, uh, and very, very permanent. So what we're doing here is we're going to be putting in some cross bracing. So we've got six inch posts on the corners and on the interior and then we have a four inch that's going to be our cross brace. I apologize if it's uh, hard to hear me out here. It's a little windy today. If it gets too windy and the video is kind of messed up, then I will do a voiceover for it. But what we've got here is a string line between our two posts that we're going to put the cross brace. Right here I've got a line level, so I know that my string is uh, perfectly level, and then I can mark out where my, my cross brace is going to go. And the reason I did this is because I can't measure up from the ground everywhere. Now I put the posts in at a roughly the same depth all the way around. You, you get off an inch or two, but if you measure up from the ground, on a flat surface, yeah, that's going to be all right. But I'm going to go slow here. It's probably three or four feet of grade change from this side of the garden to that side of the garden. And then also it falls off on the other side. So I'm just going to mark where our string is uh, so I know where I need to drill. All right, so what we want to do is drill straight through our post and uh, aim it obviously towards the other post the best that you can. I've got a 3 8 inch uh, long carbide drill bit right here. Do your best at aiming it exactly at the other post. Do the same on the other post. Next thing you're going to do is to drill a three to four inch hole in the end of your cross brace. All right, next thing we want to do is we've got a three eighths inch by eight inch galvanized spike. We're going to drive this through the end post here. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to seat our cross brace on that spike we just drove through. And we're going to mark where we need to cut our cross brace. So I've just got a battery powered uh, circular saw. I'm going to cut off the end where we marked on our cross brace. Then we're going to drill our uh, three to four inch deep hole in this end of the cross brace. Next thing we're going to do is drive a spike until it just peeks out here on the other side of this hole. is come to your corner post and we're going to go with the base of our corner post here and these are smooth staples these are not the ones that are preferable you want the ones with the barbs on them but I just could not find them at any store even the the uh, feed stores around the area so if you can find the ones with the barbs get them and what we're going to do is we're not going to put the staple in straight up and down because that's going to tend to split the grain and the staple is going to come out easier. You're going to put it at a little bit of an angle like this 
still giving the wire something to ride through, but distributing uh, the force of the points in two different places here. Now you can do two things here. You can either drive another staple or you can leave your spike um, out a little bit and not completely set in so that the wire can rest and sit and pull on that. I happen to pound the spike in all the way so I'm just going to do another, another staple here. We're going to run our 10 gauge wire from the top here of the inside post down around the bottom of the corner post. What you want to do is loop them through the bottom staple. These two end pieces need to meet here at the bottom on the corner post. Loop them through the staple and bend them back on themselves. So that way your wire is not going to go anywhere. What we're going to do from here is we are going to take this portion of the wire and clip it off. Bend it at a 90 degree point, 90 degree angle I mean, with the point. We're going to take that point and we are going to pound it like a nail into the post. Okay, our last step here is to tighten the wire so we get the proper tension and um, what we're going to do, you can use whatever you want. Uh, I've seen people use wood stakes. There's not a huge amount of tension on the bar itself, but it helps to have a strong piece to crank it. Alright, so I've got a piece of rebar here, I've also got a piece of angle iron that I had laying around that I'm going to use on the other one. Some people use pieces of cedar, whatever it may be, like two inch piece of, uh, piece of cedar in diameter. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this under the outside one, over the inside one, and we're going to start to crank. Now you want to start cranking where this is going to be able to engage and catch your cross member up here. My cross member is maybe 80 percent, 75 to 80 percent in height on this post right here. I'm going to come close to this post and I'm going to start twisting. And you can see that if I let it go, it's got tension on it, it'll stay behind the post. I'm going to keep cranking until this tightens up fairly well. You see this has got a little bit of play in it. You probably want to do one or two more cranks here. My daughter's in a singing mood today. Careful, sweetheart. This is, might snap back, okay? You step back. Okay. Thank you very much. What's that, Daddy? All right, this is for the fence. This is pretty strong right here. That's got a lot of tension on it. And you know what? It's got a tiny bit of play in it. Ariel, please step back. I said, thank you. I don't want you to get hurt. 
So we're going to give it one more crank here. That's good. What I'm going to do now is put a staple in on over the top of the rebar to just hold the rebar in place, just in case somebody wants to touch it and it, uh, it'll unravel. That won't make much of a difference once I get the fencing on here because then it'll just slap back to down on the fence and it won't go very far. Well, that's it, everyone. We appreciate you watching. Um, this has been a fun experience, learning how to build fences. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section. If you have a different way of doing it, like I said, there's like 10 different ways to do this. This is the way that seems easiest, most simple, uh, and strongest to do for me. Thank you for watching, everyone. Subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos like this. We're out here every day on the homestead doing different things. We appreciate all of you being with us, all of our subscribers. And we will see you on the next video. See you on the next video. She had no heart so hard on. Oh.